Howdy, folks. Greyhawk 4x4 coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer, and we're going to do a gaming news video today. We haven't done one of those in a while, and it is time. So, um, a couple of stories uh, came across the old computer monitor in the last couple of days that uh, prompted me to say, yeah, it's time to do a gaming news video, because these are stories that, at least for me... Um, piqued my interest because uh, they're quite newsworthy in the world of gaming. Now, uh, one of them uh, is the uh, the disillusion, well, I shouldn't say the disillusion of it, it could lead to that, but the exiting of some of the uh, founding members of the, the Zayum um, game studio, and let's... Uh, Go right here. Founding member of Disco Elysium Studio claims core developers involuntarily left the company. Now, um, the other story we're going to talk about, if you want to, um, uh, if you're not interested in this story and you want to go to the next one, the next one will be the exiting of Fran Townsend from Blizzard, uh, Activision Blizzard. That'll be the next story we cover. So uh, this one uh, is of particular note to me. Because uh, Disco Elysium, in my opinion, is one of the greatest video games ever made. Uh, it's in my top five for sure. I'm not sure exactly where I would put it. I have to give some thought to the other ones and so forth. But it's definitely in my top five. Matter of fact, um, PC Gamer, even for the best 100 games of 2022 this year, uh, still has it as number one. Um as their number one game for to, to be able to play during 2022. Um, and it came out several years ago. That's how critically acclaimed the game is. Uh, it is one of the most unique experiences you're ever going to have as a gamer if you haven't already played it. So, uh, about the story here, it uh, it basically... Well, and they mentioned the disillusion of Zayum... Um, as a cultural association as distinct from the Zay, um, the company. Um, basically, the uh, lead designer, Robert Kurvitz, writer Helen uh, Hinpier, I hope I'm saying the name right, and art director Alexander Rostov involuntarily left the company at the end of 2021. So, the reason that this is of importance to me is they were working on a sequel to... Disco Elysium. Disco Elysium 2, where obviously that would be a working title. Um, but what does this do for the sequel? Um, will those three that founded this company, will they go over and start a different company to finish the sequel? Does it belong to Zayum, even though the founding members have left and the, the creative people have left, the, the three key people that made the first one? And what this does is it leads into a bigger topic. It leads into the topic of um, corporate structure and corporate uh, business interests when it comes to the hobby that we all love gaming. Uh, as we're seeing, uh, there is a continuance. There is a theme to um, corporate greed. And... That's the only way to, to put it. Now, other people will say, well, you know, that's why companies exist, to make a profit. Nobody's disputing that they need to make a profit, and they need to make a healthy prop profit. No problem there. It's when they want to get into the obscene profits at the expense of everything else. When they get into that mode, which most corporations, it seems, get into at some point, that shit starts to fall apart. Now, as you, you may or may not know, the, the tabletop role-playing game that a lot of us love, Dungeons & Dragons, went through that back in the 80s when the person who created the company, Gary Gygax, uh, was forced out of the company that he started um, because of corporate greed. And um, that's just my opinion. There's other people that would have different opinions on that, but the bottom line was he started the company... He's ousted because uh, they felt that the, the, the company wasn't making enough profit. 
So, uh, and here we have again, we have an absolute masterpiece of a piece of art, as is Dis Disco Elysium. And the company that, that these people started, they're now involuntarily forced out of the company. And what does that mean going forward? We don't know. All we can hope is that the three of them can go and start a different development studio and, and hopefully they have the rights to do a sequel. It's my opinion that if the sequel is left up to what is left of the Zayam company without those three key people, it will not be a true sequel. It won't be because their creative vision is what is what made the game what it is. So we'll all have to wait and see. But as far as I'm concerned, this is a dark day in the world of gaming that um, that this has happened. So anyway, that's the first story today. The next story. Uh, there is a woman, if you don't know her, by the name of Frances Townsend. She's known as Fran. Fran Townsend. And we will go first to the uh, Wall Street Journal article here. Activision Blizzard Compliance Chief Francis Townsend Steps Down. Executive helped video game company respond to sexual harassment allegations last year. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Fran Townsend, this is her right here, uh, she is, she was, uh, she served as Homeland Security Advisor to the United States President George W. Bush, 2004-2007. So, um, she was actually um, one of the people that was possible to become the director of the FBI when James Comey stepped down. Now, we're getting into a whole lot of politics and everything, but, but the point I'm trying to make is this woman is a very powerful woman. She has a lot of powerful friends in Washington, in government as a whole. The fact that she became... Here. The fact that she became uh, the a an executive VP at Activision Blizzard after the uh, all the allegations that were made against Bobby Kotick and the company as a whole um, came out uh, only means one thing. She was a fixer, what what they call a fixer. Her job was to make that shit go away. Uh, as as quietly as possible. However, she had to do that. That's what she that's what she does. And the fact that she would have connections in government uh, throughout the government, when the government are the ones that are doing the investigating of Activision Blizzard, um, because uh, it was one of the investigations was the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing was in, investigating them over the company's abusive workplace conditions. Uh, she has connections. Uh, she had connections. She probably still has connections. Um, the way I like to put it with people like this is she has a lot of horsepower. And that's why she was there. Now, here is the kicker to this whole thing. Um, and I don't know if it's on, if I can see it here. Okay, so... Wall Street Journal, the rest of this is behind a paywall. We, we get the uh, the important part is right here. Um, it says here, her last day is Friday, after which she will become a senior advisor to the company's board and chief executive, Bobby Kotick. Mr. Kotick wrote, late Thursday, uh, wrote in a late Thursday email to staff viewed uh, by the Wall Street Journal. So she is going to leave as an employee of the company. She will no longer be an employee, but she's still going to be on the board um, and a senior advisor to Bobby Kotick. Now, so what that does is it gives them some separation to be able to say, oh, well, she's not an employee of the company anymore. Whatever she says is not a reflection on the company because she's no longer an employee. She's just an advisor, but she's not paid for by the company. She will get, there's no question that she's going to get paid. She will be paid as an as a, uh, uh, independent contractor for consult, she'll be paid consulting fees as a consultant. Um, but 
you can bet your ass that if they're keeping her on the board and keeping her as an advisor, they're that shit ain't cheap. Um, because she could go on a speaking tour and just do public speaking based upon her time uh, working at the White House um, uh, in the George Bush years and all that stuff. So she's getting paid. Um, but what that means to all of us is that when it goes back to what I was saying uh, originally about the um, uh, corporate greed uh, influencing our games as a whole, um, here are two prime examples. You have the Disco Elysium one, uh, and you ha now have the ongoing Activision Blizzard one. Um, and the bottom line is that uh, I'm very comfortable in my decision that I made a while back when I said, uh, however long ago, ago it was, um, that I would no longer give Blizzard, uh, Activision Blizzard any of my money as long as Bobby Kotick was still there. And he's still there. And not only is he still there, but he's posturing to... Uh, keep somebody like Fran Townsend and her horsepower that comes with it um, in, in an advisory role to try and basically uh, make all the bad shit go away. So um, the, the hobby that we all love is um, unfortunately uh, deeply influenced by uh, corporate bullshit. So... Anyway, there, those are the two uh, news items that I wanted to talk about today. Um, and there's, there's a couple other ones. I mean, Stadia, Stadia leaving, uh, the Google shut down and Stadia, the Stadia platform. Um, that one does not personally affect me. I never, I never even tried the Stadia. There was something about it that just didn't, it just didn't um, feel right to have a 100% cloud service. Um, platform where everything is on the cloud you literally have no license you have no no nothing i mean if you buy a game through steam you can go on your steam profile you can go to that game you can actually look at the license that you have for that game even though you just own it digitally you still have a license that wasn't the case with uh with stadia so um anyway that's the news for today guys and until next time we'll catch you on the flip side